Um, David Barry reporting for Jewish Online Magazine and uh, our special guest today is Stuart Williamson and um, he is a volunteer for the 2012 Olympics. Um, my first question, well, welcome first of all to Jewish Online Magazine, uh, Thank Stuart. You, Thank you. Um, my first question to you um, is why did you want to apply? First of all, we'll go for the application first. Why did you want to apply to be a volunteer? I saw the um, advertisement asking for volunteers back in 2010. And uh, I thought, well, as I'm 65 in the middle of 2012, coming up to semi-retirement, um, I would try and give something back to my adopted city of London. I'm originally from the north of England, Leeds, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity, as I'll have some time in Spain, the summer of 2012, to actually be involved in putting something back to the city of London, which is a great city. Mm. And um, I'm also interested in uh, sport, and I foresaw that there would be ballots and what have you for the actual uh, tickets for the events. So I thought rather than get involved in that, I would actually give of my time rather than of my money. Was it, was it um, when you applied, did you think you were going to be successful because um, there were hundreds of thousands of applications, wasn't there? There were 250,000 applications wow. for 70,000 volunteer places. Wow. So were you really amazed when you got that nod that, um, of confirmation that you were going to be a volunteer? I was uh, surprised mm. and delighted and, and pleased that uh, they actually passed certainly the first uh, round of interviews. How did you, was it an interview process then? Yes, it was an interview process. Um, the human resources were, uh, function is being provided by McDonald's UK who are one of the sponsors, and I was interviewed by one of their human resources team. Uh, and it was quite a um, in-depth interview. Fun, but nevertheless it was quite searching, and uh, I had to sell myself and uh, what I could do. Mm. So it was basically like going for a job interview then? Exactly like a job interview, yes. And uh, if you want to be successful at securing a job, you have to show enthusiasm and passion and energy, and that's what you did at your interview. I would hope so. That's, that's, they said that's what you have to show, and I, obviously I showed that because they, they, they chose me. And um, could you choose what you wanted to volunteer for? Um, you had to, in the application, you had to put down what you would like to do. Mm. And I put down um, protocol which basically would have meant... Um, Can I expand on that? Yeah, sure. Protocol mm. uh, means um, being outside the venues where the events were taking place, looking out for people selling contraband merchandise. In other words, merchandise that was not approved by... Um, not licensed. By LOCOG, which is the Olympic um, right. Organising Committee. Um, and I would then get on the, uh, on the blower that we provided with walkie-talkies and said, you know, someone's selling um, dodgy gear outside Lord's Cricket Ground, and then, of course, the heavy boys would come in and cart them away, or at least tell them to stop. Mm. Uh, but, 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 but why did you choose that particular that role? Was, that, was, that was my first choice. Oh, okay. My second choice was Sorry. Olympic Family Assistant, which is what I've been successful in uh, being, okay. being given. Olympic Family Assistant. Yes. Okay. Can you expand on that? Sure. An Olympic Family Assistant is basically um, helping the clients of the London Olympics who are, in broad terms, um, members of foreign Olympic delegations, committees or sports federation. And they are sending their dignitaries along, probably with their families, and it, it is my job to help them with whatever they need, such as driving them to events, and basically, whatever they, they request, within reason, we have to comply with. That's an amazingly responsible position, isn't it? Indeed. It's, um, is it something that you're relishing and looking forward to? Well, um, in my um, uh, career as a chartered accountant, I obviously put customer service first and 
that is what they want us to do as Olympic Family Assistants. And um, are you going to have to undertake training as well? I have to. I have done, and I will be doing more training. Uh, I've been to three training events, and I have um, two more to do before I am fully fledged Olympic Family Assistant. Mm. And um, is this role going to take place through the Paralympics as well? No, I am the Olympic family, an Olympic family assistant, um, not a Paralympic family assistant. Um, although I did say that I was available for that, but um, my role is just on the Olympics mm. themselves. And um, are you going to have to be available from a few days before the Olympics um, to obviously um, commence the position of Olympic family assistant? Um, yes, if I am attached to a specific family, I will have to um, probably meet them at least a week before the Olympics actually start. Mm. Actually, probably more. Um, maybe from the 15th of July, that's my official start date. Mm. Um, although I wouldn't have full shifts between the 15th of July and the 27th, which is the opening ceremony, um, I probably would uh, meet with the families discuss what their schedules are. We meet them at the airport? And no, 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 that, that's a separate function. Meet them once they're um, installed where they are staying. Right. And do you know the family that you're going to be looking after? No, because um, most of the Olympic uh, federations and committees and sports federations haven't yet um, decided all of the people who will attend. Mm. It's amazing to know that there's going to be approximately seven and a half million visitors coming to London for the 2012 Olympics. Yes, it's, a, yes, that's it, it's phenomenal, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a, an exciting um, thing that's happening to London and the UK, isn't it? That's, exactly. That's, that's the main reason why I wanted to become involved, because of the, the absolute... Um, um, myriad of people from all walks of life. I mean, I've seen from the volunteers that I've met, um, they've come from um, not just all parts of the UK, but I met people from Canada, Australia, um, Israel. It is Actually, I was going to ask, uh, um, have you come across any other Jewish volunteers? I've come across um, three other Jewish volunteers, yes, mm. but I'm sure there are more. Mm. And what do you think Judaism has got to play in you being a volunteer? I think it's important to show um, people um, on the Olympic Committee and other volunteers that Jewish people in England are prepared to be involved. Uh, we have our own um, requirements, obviously. I can't work on Shabbat. Um, which is did, uh, did, you, did you put that to them when you were being interviewed? When I was being interviewed, in fact the interview interviewer uh, obviously saw my equipment and said I don't suppose you'll be working from uh, sundown wow. on Friday till sunset on Saturday. So obviously they're, they're, they are clued in. And, and it got the impression they respect you for that? They respect, they respect all um, um, ethnicities and uh, uh, disabilities and abilities. Um, it's a very, they're called the Inclusive Games, and uh, I'm sure that is the case. And do you think by being a Jewish Olympic volunteer that there'll be plenty of opportunities to perform a Kiddush Hashem? I hope so, yes. Um, and it's something that I'm very much aware of, um, to do that positively, and obviously not to do a Chilol Hashem. So mm. um, it's a double-edged sword. And it's an extra responsibility for, for a Jewish volunteer um, to, 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 to play a part in this way. Mm. Um, there has been um, some questions that I've been asked to ask um, about the Munich murders. And um, I was wondering if you put it to the Olympic authorities that maybe there should be uh, a minute silence to show the respect for the Israeli 
sports um, people that uh, were murdered in Munich in 72. Um, as an Olympic volunteer, whatever my um, political uh, uh, beliefs in that area, I, I can't comment on this interview, um, but um, I am aware of the fact that since Munich there has not been uh, anything uh, by any Olympic um, uh, country and I hope that the people who are um, trying to achieve this will eventually uh, it will eventually bear fruit and that there will be something um, at um, future Olympics if not this Olympic. Mm. And um, what's the most um, thing that you're looking forward to most as being a Jewish Olympic volunteer? I think uh, meeting people from all walks of life mm. and for them to see um, that a Jewish person is of service to them and um, you know can help them in, 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 in making the best of the Olympics mm. and in that way making their experience uh, of the Olympic, London Olympics a positive one because of the Olympics and that they will go away and say you know what I met a Jewish person they were my family assistant uh, you know Jews are not so bad after all mm -hmm. so maybe was it was that one of your motivations do you think by uh, volunteering no not really I, I think it's a consequence rather than a motivation my motivation was was to be um, involved first and foremost and then of course um, as time goes on I start thinking about um, the Jewish angle and uh, it's just important that, that Jewish people in the UK show that um, they can get involved mm. and uh, be, of, be of service mm. to the uh, Olympic dignitaries who are attending. Um, are you going to be able to get to see any sports? Uh, not as a uh, um, volunteer, um, no, unless um, any of the families that I'm involved with just happen to, to give me a ticket. Um, I will not be able to, to go into the uh, um, events while I am on duty mm. um, unless specifically requested by a family. Is this a 24-6 um, role? Um, no, um, the shifts are um, roughly 10 hours per day on whichever day that they request me to do. Um, you have to give uh, undertake to do a minimum of 10 days um, which I've done uh, but I said I will do more if asked mm. and will there be an opportunity for you to see um, your favorite sports at the Olympics uh, I don't think so mm. um, I mean my favorite sports um, uh, are um, rugby which I don't think there are I don't think there is a rugby sevens competition no. this year. Yes. Um, and uh, athletics and the Blue Ribbon events, I, I probably will be involved in, in, in taking the uh, dignitaries to those events if, I'm, if they are attending one of the athletics uh, events. Um, so it's unlikely I'll be able to, to see those. But, you know, I can set the video recorder at home and mm. uh, when I've got some spare time I can, I can watch them. Mm. How do you think the UK, Great Britain are going to get on? Um, I think their target is to be fourth in the medal table, isn't it? Yes, I, I think they will achieve fourth. It would be nice if they could get even higher, but I think um, the major countries, um, you know, Australia, particularly in the swimming, and USA and uh, Russia, just by virtue of the sheer numbers of people they have in their countries, mm. um, uh, will, will probably head the medal table. So if we can mix up in between those and China, then we're, we're going to be fourth or fifth, I think, mm. certainly. And cycling is going to be very important, isn't it, to Great Britain? It will appear so, yeah. Cycling and rowing, I think, uh, those sports we, we have done well in the past few um, years and Olympics, so I think that will continue. Mm. Have you been down to Stratford? Uh, no, uh, my first visit to Stratford will be uh, to collect my uniform uh, in the middle of June. Oh, OK. Um, Stratford has changed beyond all recognition. I understand so, but it's not a place... I have actually ever been to. Oh, really? OK. Um, did you discuss um, at your interview about the Olympic legacy? Um, I didn't specifically, no. Mm. Because the legacy is 
as important as the Olympic Games, isn't it? Um, are not as important as as the, um, the the games themselves, but certainly um, what happens afterwards is important in mm. terms of the economy of, of London in particular and the UK in general. Mm. And I think that's going to be a positive outcome, mm. in spite of some people who would say to the contrary. Mm. And it's amazing that um, one wouldn't have thought maybe 15 years ago that you were going to be an Olympic volunteer. Um, no, although I must admit I, I did attend the whole of the Commonwealth Games in, uh, in Manchester, uh, no, in Edinburgh. Oh, okay. Uh, in 1984, I think it was, mm. and uh, I came across the volunteers there. And I, at the back of my mind, I think I must have thought, oh, well, that's, yeah, that's a good thing to do. And obviously, that that is one of the things that spurred me on mm. to apply. And um, did your family support your application? Um, yes, they did. Mm. And. Um, were they equally a surprise when you were successful? Um, one of my uh, chief supporters in my application was my wife. Oh. Unfortunately, she passed away last year. Oh, so, um, so she wasn't able to see that, uh, uh, that I had actually uh, passed uh, the test and become a volunteer. So um, I hope she's been looking down on me when yes. I'm, I'm doing the volunteering. and. Uh, uh, she will be as proud of me mm. um, now as she would have been if she was still with us. Yes, and, and by you, um, in your role, um, by maybe, I'm sure, performing a Kiddush Hashem, that will be um, a shining light to her neshama um, as well. Thank you. That's very good of you to say, so I would hope that would be the case. Mm. And um, with regard to... Um, Choosing, were you able to choose which nation um, that the, the family you could um, choose from? No, um, it's purely uh, part luck. They they organise. So it would be funny, perhaps, if you drew an Israeli uh, family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as I'm aware, I think the Israelis are being looked after via the Maccabi organisation. Right. Um, but there may well be scope there. But they, the organisers try and, um, you know, they know all about me. They will know all about the, the, the families who are coming. And uh, from what I've seen of, of the people who are involved, I'm sure they will do a good job in matching up um, the volunteers with the families. Mm. And we all hope that the uh, queuing up at Heathrow Airport is going to be solved before the Olympics, don't we? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is an absolute nightmare. And if they don't get it right, that will be the overriding... Um, impression mm -hmm. uh, that people who come to the Olympics, either spectators or dignitaries, will carry with them. So I think the, um, the government and BAA really have to get this right. Um, otherwise, they're, they're, they're in for a lot of brickbats. No, absolutely, because obviously, you know, um, Heathrow Airport is one of the um, shop windows um, to Great Britain and um, if the dignitaries and all the visitors are not impressed with the shop window, it won't create a good impression, will it? Exactly, 100%. Uh, first impressions are what, what count. And, uh, yeah, if they don't get it right, then it's not, I wouldn't say it's disastrous, but it will leave a, 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 a bad impression, which is not, which is, uh, not what um, the uh, low-cog organisers wish. Mm. And um, do you know if you are the only Jewish... Olympic volunteer in North West London? Um, I do know of two others. Mm. Um, and are you, are, you, are you liaising with them and comparing notes, so to speak? I have been with one of them, yes. Um, mm. they're, they're taking different roles from myself. Did you know them before, or did you meet them at the interview? Uh, they are members of my shul. Actually. OK. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, the, the first, um, the first uh, event we attended was uh, an orientation event at uh, Wembley Arena. And if you recall, it was the very first um, uh, snowfall of the winter on a Sunday. It was very bad snow, so I decided I would get the bus. I got on the bus, and uh, um, the first person I saw on the bus was, was someone from Ashua. He says, where are you going? I said, Wembley you really? He says, so am I. <laughs> and at the very next stop, uh, the other guy got on. So it was... It was uh, that's, the, um, that's an amazing coincidence. 
um, the t- two mem- so there's three members of, of your of your shawl that, that I know of. Maybe there's more, but wow. three that I know of. Yes. Wow. Yes. Why do you think? I mean, I know, I know we've touched on this a little bit before, but why do you think Jewish people um, want to be Olympic volunteers? I think it's in the Jewish uh, nature to to do things for others. Mm. That's it. I think you know it's it's. Um, uh, you know, we, we, we're, we're big on Sadaka mm. and helping people and uh, I think that's, that's what uh, is, is really, is, is within us. So, mm. so we not, if, if we're asked for help, uh, Jewish so people will be provided. So, so you'll be representing um, the country of your birth and, and you'll also be re- representing the Jewish people? I'm very much conscious of, of that, certainly. Mm. Uh, Stuart Williamson, uh, Olympic Jewish volunteer. Uh, thank you ever so much for joining Jewish Online magazine. It's been a most fascinating and interesting interview and uh, wish you lots of luck um, in your role as uh, Olympic Family Assistant. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. Pleasure.